racers, welcome to the first episode of Mini C for Beginners. My name is Chris, aka Bye Bye Racing, and the owner and moderator of the Kyosha Mini Z Buy Sell Trade Group on Facebook. So you click this video because I promised you all that I would start making introduction videos to the Kyosho Mini Z. The scale has seen an explosive growth in the past 12 months, and with that we've gained a lot of new racers to the 128th scale. Now this isn't going to be a traditional unboxing. I'm going to get right into the contents of the kit. We're going to talk about the radio, we're going to talk about the chassis, we're going to talk about some of the small parts that comes in the kit, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add batteries to our radio, we're going to add batteries to our chassis, and then I'm going to take a spin around the track just as it comes out of the packaging. We're going to start out actually in training mode. I'm going to run a couple laps so you can see what happens. I'm going to take it out of training mode. I'm going to run it with the stock tires that came with it. And then afterwards, I'm going to change over to a set of tires that are from Kyosho. These are 30 fronts and 20 rears. I'm going to put those on and we'll see the difference it makes. And I'll run those also in training mode first. And then I'll demonstrate how it looks outside of training mode. So let's begin. So let's see what comes in this kit. This particular kit comes with a fully assembled chassis with the body mounted to the chassis. Next, we have the radio, a set of cones, a pairing stick, a wheel nut wrench, some loose parts that come in a bag, and a pinion puller. Now let's have a closer look at each of these in detail. We'll start with the chassis. This particular ready to run kit is RWD Wide MM. And these designators are found on the bottom of the box. When we see RWD, it means rear wheel drive. As we take a closer look at the chassis, we can see the motor and it only drives the rear axle. When we talk about wide, we are referring to the track width, which is from side to side. At a glance, you can see that on the top and bottom covers of the front portion of the chassis, there is a W. These two pieces only work together to achieve this designation. This goes the same for the narrow, which comes in the kit. Now let's go over the chassis in depth. The chassis has an all-in-one speed controller, receiver, and servo controller, and is not modular in such a way that we can change or upgrade it without fully replacing it. The chassis takes four AAA alkaline or rechargeable batteries. We're going to use rechargeable batteries. The included motor is a 130 class motor with a maximum speed of around 17 kilometers per hour. It uses a pinion and spur gear, and the pinion and motor position can be changed with the parts included with the kit. The chassis uses a solid axle and differential, and the rear end pivots in all directions on a flexible T-shaped suspension plate. There is a spring shock damper mounted on the top of the chassis meant to control the roll and pitch. The steering servo is an internal assembled unit and includes a servo saver and uses a steering rod. The front suspension is a variable camber system that adjusts the camber in conjunction with the front suspension stroke. Kyosho sells many aluminum upgrade and tuning parts for just about everything on the chassis, which allows you to fine tune your chassis to your driving style or to meet racing class rules at your local racetrack or club. Next we have the transmitter. This is the Synchro KT531P transmitter that operates on FHSS 2.4 GHz. The radio features steering trim, throttle trim, as well as dual rate adjustment of steering angle, and you can control the optional light units when they are installed. The transmitter also has a training mode which limits speed of the car for easy learning. Training mode is set by default out of the box. The kit includes several parts I mentioned earlier. We have 20 mini pylons so we can set up a small course on a hard flooring surface or outside on smooth concrete. There's also a wheel wrench that is meant for removing and reinstalling the wheel nuts. You get a pinion gear tool that's needed to remove the pinion from the motor should you choose to change the gearing. This tool is also good for pushing the batteries out of the chassis. The pairing stick is needed from time to time when your chassis is no longer connected to your transmitter or it needs to be reconnected. You can also use this if you want to pair your transmitter to another chassis. The kit also comes with a bag of small parts. Included in the bag is top and bottom narrow covers, as we talked about earlier, as well as a narrow steering rod to change the front track width to accommodate those narrow designated bodies. The kit also comes with seven through nine tooth pinions. 
with corresponding motor spacers to change the gearing to fine tune the power to the track size. There are also shock damper stays of differing lengths. You'll need these when you change your wheelbase. There's also some spare wheel nuts which you'll surely strip or lose. Same with these C-clips for the front suspension. And two additional 0.8mm shims to adjust the ride height of the front suspension. This particular wheel wheel drive kit includes the Petronas Toms SC430 2012 auto scale body. This body uses a 98mm wheelbase and a wide front designation. The auto scale bodies are quite detailed with side view mirrors, a hard plastic rear wing, and a polished clear coat over high definition decals. The body itself also has the curves and aerodynamics just like the real thing. As we look on the inside, the window is transparent and removable. There are also side body mounts that are glued in place and there is a pocket in the front of the body for the front body mount that is attached to the chassis. The wheels for this kit are specific to the body to continue to mimic the real race car. Now let's add batteries to our car and our transmitter and we'll turn everything on and put it on the track. Okay, welcome to the BBR test track. I demonstrated earlier that when you turn it on, you actually start out in training mode. So you can see when you turn it on, start flashing, turn the chassis on, and we get this slow flash. And that's going to be in our training mode. Now, I haven't changed the tires. This is the stock tires. I think there's something like 40s or 50s. It doesn't want to turn. Very slow. Easy to control, really can't spin out, on full throttle, wide open, off the throttle, turning, and pretty easy to drive, pretty easy to learn with if you're new. Um, and when I say new, I'm really talking about somebody who's new to racing RC cars, not necessarily the guys who are, guys or girls who are already used to racing. Uh, larger scales or whatever. Okay, so that was a few laps in training mode. So let's go ahead and we're going to take it out of training mode. Great. Now, what's going to happen? I've got these harder tires. It's going to be slip, slipperier, smoother, slicker. Okay. Whew. Okay, I have more steering. Oh, I just lost it. And my tires obviously are too slick. Woo! <laughs> Trying to drift it. Oh, almost. Okay, here we go, here we go. Let's see if I can get a good lap. Off the throttle. I have a lot more steering now. It's allowing me to turn tighter. Whoa. Oh, too much, too much. Oh, too much. Okay, all right, so here's what we're gonna do. I've got the Kyosho tires. I got the Kyosho 30 fronts. These are a flat front. And I have the 20 degree near, or sorry, I have the 20 degree rears. And I'm gonna go ahead and change these out. Okay, so I want to catch this on camera for all the new the new racers out there to the scale. Question gets asked: what tires do I use? I have a set of 20 degree rears here, 30 degree front. 20s are gonna be softer, they're gonna wear sooner or faster than a 30. Okay, but the softer or the lower the number, 
the stickier the tire is going to be. Uh, so you just want to adjust, um, choose the tire to the track condition, choose the tire to your driving style. But most people are going to go with the stickiest rear tire they can get and then adjust the front suspension from there. So to change the tires, very simple. Just pull it off. The tire, this is an 8 millimeter front. Sorry, 8.5 millimeter front. This is an 11 millimeter rear. There's a small lip uh, that sticks out on the inside of the wheel. And then there's a small lip or a dip, if you will, on the inside of the tire. And that lines up with that lip there so that the tire doesn't slide inside as you're turning. So real simply, just slip, slip the tires off. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our tire. We're going to put it right under the right under the wheel. Now, as a new racer, you don't have to worry about tire tape, any of that stuff. Okay, at least, at least not right away. If you're using the stock wheels that come with the car, chances are it's going to be the proper width, uh, proper offset. Chances are it's going to be the proper offset. And so you're probably not going to hit the wall and lose a tire. And even in the stock car, you're less likely to lose a tire because you're not really going that fast. So that's it. Change that our tires. I like to use a stickier rear tire. Most racers are going to have a stickier rear tire than the front tire. And the idea is there's a little bit of understeer. These things have a ton of grip uh, just mechanically out of the box. Change the tires and, uh, and you're good. In fact, spinning out actually creates a lot less confidence on the track. So let's go ahead and get back on the track. I'm going to set this in training mode and we're going to run it in training mode so that you can see what it looks like with a decent set of tires. Okay, we're back again. I'm going to put the throttle forward this time and that's going to put the transmitter in training mode. I'm going to let it go. Now I know it's in training mode because it's flashing. Turn the car on. And you can see the throttle response is much slower. So I have a ton more steering now. I am full throttle, wide open. I mean, triggers all the way down. That's full turn, full turn. We'll turn on the transmitter okay we're going to take it out of training mode and we're going to put it in uh, regular mode so we're going to pull the trigger turn transmitter on let go of the trigger should say solid turn chassis on better throttle response here we go Pretty good, easy to drive. Full throttle there. Off throttle, you can hear it through the essence. Oh, trying to get brave. Okay. Very good. And welcome back, back in the lab. So that's some pretty good laps. You can see the difference when we go from running it in training mode, using the factory tires, stuff that comes out of the box. You saw that it was very slick, not a lot of grip. Then what we did is we changed over to a set of 20 degree rears and 30 degree fronts. And you can see a dramatic change in the handling and just how well it was driving around the track. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. Please hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you for watching. I'm going to bring you more videos about the Mini Z that you can watch and learn. And we're going to go through a lot of this stuff together. We'll get back out on the track. This thing was running really, really well.